Hey everybody, I'm doing a snow themed review this week and just by coincidence, we had a snowstorm. How many times am I going to have the chance to do a snow themed video in the snow? Yes, I'm doing snow job. I've got the snow now. Now I just need a job. Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. This is the show where we review every vintage G.I. Joe toy from 1982 to 1994. This is a redo of an older review. I have been doing a few redos this year, but I didn't intend to do two in a row. I will not be doing them that frequently in the future, but this is the one that won the Patreon poll, so we are rolling with Snow Job. 1983 may have been the most transformative year for G.I. Joe. They moved away from the standard green uniforms of 1982 and introduced a whole rainbow of colors and specialties to the team. The lineup was suddenly filled with blues and tans and well, mostly blue and tan. But even in 1983, Snow Job stood out in his all-white uniform. I remember seeing this figure on the shelves and thinking how amazingly unique it looked, and I had to have it. And we don't get much snow here, which is why this is an amazing coincidence. I didn't really have that much chance to play with this figure in the snow. G.I. Joe had many other snow troopers throughout the years, but oddly, there was no second version of Snow Job in the vintage line. The name Snow Job inspires a bit of laughter. It sounds kind of funny but it doesn't mean what you think it means. It has no relation to the thing that it rhymes with. Let's take a look at the standout figure from 1983, G.I. Joe's first Arctic Trooper, Snow Job. This is Snow Job, G.I. Joe's Arctic Trooper from 1983. This figure was introduced in 1983 and was also available in 1984 and 1985. It was discontinued for 1986. It was also released as a J.C. Penny exclusive three-pack with torpedo and tripwire. This is the only version of Snow Job in the vintage line. Snow Job was part of a revolution in 1983. In the first series of G.I. Joe action figures in 1982, green was the dominant color. On the Joe team, only Snake Eyes and Scarlet departed from the general green color scheme. That's why the original 13 Joes are referred to as the Green 13. The 1983 series incorporated a lot more colors. It had some notably not green figures like Airborne, Gung Ho, and Doc. Snow Job was striking being an all white. He really stood out on the pegs. A Snow Job is defined as a deception or concealment of one real motive in an attempt to flatter or persuade. In short, a snow job is a con. The name makes a bit more sense when you read snow job's file card. The name has no relation to the thing it rhymes with. There were a few other snow related figures introduced in the vintage G.I. Joe toy line. In 1985 there was Frostbite, the snowcat driver. In 1986 there was Iceberg. In 1987, there was Avalanche from Battle Force 2000. In 1988, there was Blizzard and a second version of Frostbite from Tiger Force. In 1989, we had Stalker version 2, billed as the Tundra Ranger. Also in 1989, we had Windchill, the driver of the Arctic Blast. In 1990, we had Sub-Zero. Also in 1990, we had Cold Front, the driver of the Avalanche. That was the Avalanche, a vehicle, no relation to Avalanche from Battle Force 2000. 1993 had a lot of cold weather fighters. There was Iceberg version 2. There was also the Arctic Commandos mail away set, which included Stalker version 4, Sub Zero version 2, and DJ version 2. That Arctic Commandos mail away set also included the Cobra Snow Serpent version 3. 1993 also saw Frostbite version 3 and Snowstorm versions 1 and 2. I still have those three figures on the card. 1994 was the final year of the vintage era of the G.I. Joe toy line. In that year, we got two winter-themed figures that included Snowstorm version 3 and Windchill version 2, the driver of the blockbuster vehicle. Cobra had its own cold weather fighters. In 1985, there was the Snow Serpent. In 1987, there was the Ice Viper, the driver of the Cobra Wolf. In 1991, there was Snow Serpent version 2. And in 1993, there was Snow Serpent version 3 as part of that Arctic Commandos mail-away set. Co 
Cobra may have had fewer snow fighters, but they were all army builders, so there would have been hundreds of these guys going after G.I. Joe. Although Snowjob was not a vehicle driver, he was closely associated with the 1983 Polar Battle Bear Snowmobile. He was on the vehicle box art. He was also seen driving it in the cartoon and comic book. I have a modern Snowjob figure, so let's take a look at it. This is Snowjob version 3 from 2008. This is part of the 25th anniversary series. This is a fully modern figure with updated sculpting and articulation. The modern figure keeps with the basic look of that white uniform seen on version 1. His accessories include a rifle that is very similar to the version 1 rifle. It is in black plastic rather than dark gray. He has a hood that is removable and his goggles are also removable. That's really nice. He has a backpack very similar to the version 1 backpack and like that backpack you can also store the skis and the ski poles. The skis peg on with the foot pegs, very similar to the version 1 backpack, but of course the foot pegs are a different size for the modern figure, so these skis will not be exactly the same as the vintage skis. The ski poles fit in these slots on the side of the backpack, and these ski poles, unlike the version 1 accessories, are in a black plastic rather than dark gray. Like the vintage skis, the modern skis are in white plastic, but they do have some paint. They have these little spots of off-white and that's nice. I'm not sure that was worth the paint spray but I'll take it. These skis will fit on the feet of the figure. Just press the foot peg into the hole on the bottom of the foot. Unlike the vintage figure, the hole on the foot is more toward the front of the foot than on the heel but they do fit on. Now these modern skis will not fit on the vintage figure. On his left leg he has an attached black pistol holster with a flap and is that an Adventure Team logo? on that holster. Inside the holster there is another accessory. It can be removed. It's very small. It is a black revolver. The final accessory is the figure stand. Modern figures came with these modern figure stands. On it is printed code name Snowjob. This is a modern G.I. Joe figure so it has modern articulation which is mostly the same as vintage articulation but there are a few additional articulation points. It still has a ball jointed head as you would get on post-1983 figures, but the ball joint is at the base of the skull rather than the base of the neck. Uh, there is torso articulation at the chest cut rather than at the belt. You've got basically the same range of motion on the arm as you would have on a vintage figure, but there is the additional wrist articulation. Leg articulation at the hip is hindered a bit by this coat, but he does have double jointed knees and ankle articulation. This modern snow job figure has many of the same details as the vintage figure just updated a bit. His beard is not quite as red as on the vintage figure. He has the straps and the pouches much like the vintage figure. He has the brown belt and some black pouches. He has that pistol holster on the right leg and on the left leg is that a pocket patrol pack? The removable goggles are pretty cool, but you have to keep the hood on to get the full effect. I do like the functionality of the backpack with the skis and the ski poles. That's excellent. That revolver is really too tiny. It's kind of undersized. This is not a bad modern interpretation of a vintage figure, but I'm a bit surprised at the hindrance of the leg articulation, as additional articulation was one of the selling points of these modern figures. We've talked a lot about the modern snow jobs accessories let's look at vintage snow jobs accessories starting with his primary weapon this is the xmlr 3a laser rifle it is in dark gray plastic this xmlr 3a laser rifle was an updated version of the xmlr 1a laser rifle that was included with 1982 flash this laser rifle is probably one of the most important accessories in gi joe history it was reissued a few times it was in light gray plastic in Battle Gear accessory pack number two. It was in a medium gray plastic, a little bit lighter than the original accessory with the transportable tactical battle platform. And it was issued in blue plastic with the Cobra rifle range. This laser rifle was originally supposed to be issued with Duke and was even featured on the card art. But when the Duke action figure was actually released, he came with a different accessory, a reissue of the submachine gun that was originally issued 
associated with 1982 Stalker. The reason the XMLR3A laser rifle is so important is not because of the reissues. It became the standard laser rifle used in the G.I. Joe animated series. It was used by nearly every G.I. Joe character. It appeared hundreds of times in the Sunbow era of the animated series. Next, let's look at Snowjob's skis. The skis fit on the feet of the action figure using foot pegs just like a figure stand. The skis are long. They are made of white plastic. They have foot pegs for attaching to the figure. Other than the foot pegs, they are rather plain. These skis can be brittle, so use caution to avoid breaking them. Since they fit on the figure's feet, you can use them in lieu of a figure stand, which I have been doing with this video. As an added bonus on the back of the backpack, there are a couple holes that fit the foot pegs on the skis, so the skis can be stored when Snowjob is not using them. You can fit both skis on the backpack, and they fit pretty securely. Next, we get to the ski poles. There are two of them, one for each hand. They will fit in the figure's hand, but I am using the poles rather than the handles because those handles are a little bit thick, and I do not want to stress the thumbs on this figure. These ski poles are made of dark gray plastic. They are very thin, but they're also flexible, so they're not likely to break. They each have a handle and a loop. Those loops can be put around Snowjob's wrists. They have discs at the bottom. As with the skis, there is storage on the backpack for these ski poles. There's a slot on each side of the backpack, and you can slot the ski poles on those slots. So now you can store both the skis and the ski poles when Snowjob is not using them. Finally, we turn our attention to that backpack, and this is a special backpack. As shown, it will work with the skis and the ski poles. That is its primary function. The backpack is in white plastic. It has the holes for the foot pegs and the slots for the ski poles. In addition to that, it has a handle at the top. That is pretty thick. I would not try to fit that in the figure's hands. It also has some pouches sculpted on. A word of caution, the slots on the side of the backpack for the ski poles can be brittle, and you could snap them off just putting the ski poles in or taking them out. So be cautious with that. Let's take a look at Snowjob's articulation. He had the articulation that was standard for G.I. Joe figures by 1983, so he could turn his head from left to right. He could lift his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He had a hinge at the elbow that allowed him to bend his arm at the elbow about 90 degrees. He had a swivel at the bicep that allowed his arm to be swiveled all the way around. This was an O-ring figure, meaning the figure was held together with a rubber O-ring that looped around the inside. That allowed him to move at the torso a bit. He could move his legs apart about so far. He could bend his leg at the hip about 90 degrees and bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's look at the sculpt design and color of Snowjob, and I'll start by saying this figure is mostly white, as you can see. It isn't perfectly white, though, and it's guaranteed to turn more yellow over time. In fact, all white and light-colored G.I. Joe figures will eventually yellow over time. This is caused by the bromide flame retardants. The flame retardants were added to the plastic to meet safety regulations, but bromide is sensitive to UV light and turns yellow as it degrades. Although all plastic will eventually degrade, BFRs apparently accelerate this process. Not all batches of plastic will contain exactly the same amount of bromide, so different figures and even different parts on the same figure will discolor at different rates. The discoloration will also cause the plastic to become brittle, so watch out with those discolored figures. There are methods of reversing the yellowing with hydrogen peroxide or a compound made with hydrogen peroxide. The technique is a bit finicky, so I haven't had much luck with it, but other collectors have. I should warn, though, that whitening toys by this method doesn't reverse the fundamental chemical reaction that caused the discoloration in the first place. If you have a still white snow job or storm shadow, you are lucky. Try to keep it out of UV light as much as possible. It's probably impossible to keep it from eventually discoloring. Let's look at snow job's head. He is wearing a white fur lined hood and black goggles, and he has a bright red beard. The red beard adds a shock of color to what is otherwise mostly a monochromatic figure. It's a great design choice. On his chest, he has a white coat 
coat with a black scarf. On that coat, he has some pockets in the front, and he has brown straps with buckles that go over each shoulder, and they stop in the back where the backpack attaches. The arms feature long white sleeves and white gloves. There are pockets on the front of the upper arms, and there are pockets on the outside of the forearms. These upper arms are reused from the 1983 reissues of some of the 1982 figures. The upper arms are the same, the lower arms are different. His waist piece is in white plastic. He has a white coat tail tucked under a brown belt. He has a black belt buckle and black pouches. His legs are white. On his right leg, he has a black pistol holster. On the left leg, he has a black pouch. The pouch is very similar to the pouches seen on some 1982 figures, but it's a little different, and those 1982 pouches are on the right leg, and this is on the left leg. His lower legs feature pockets on the inside and the outside of the lower legs, and he has plain white boots. Given the white uniform and red beard, I would say his Ben & Jerry's flavor is strawberry cheesecake. Let's take a look at Snow Job's file card. His file card has his faction as G.I. Joe. It has a portrait of Snow Job here. He is the Arctic Trooper codename Snow Job. His file name is Harlan W. Moore. His primary military specialty is Arctic Ski Patrol. His secondary military specialty is Rifle Instructor. His birthplace is Rutland, Vermont, and his grade is E6 Sergeant. This paragraph says, Snow Job was a major Olympic biathlon contender. Biathlon is a winter Olympic sport that combines cross-country skiing and rifle shooting. He enlisted initially for the special training and support privileges that the Army gives to Olympic champions. Is he an Olympic champion or is he an Olympic contender? I assumed this was referring to the WCAP, the U.S. Army's World Class Athlete Program, but that can't be it. That program started in 1997. There was probably a preceding program, but I haven't found a reference for it. Also, is he an Olympic champion? Does that mean he won a medal? Or is he an Olympic contender, and does that mean he didn't make it to the Olympics, or he made it and he didn't win? Well, he definitely didn't win a medal in the Olympics. In the 1980 Olympics, the U.S. won no medals in the biathlon. All the medals in that event were won by the Soviet Union, West Germany, and East Germany. Maybe this is referring to the 1976 Olympics in Innsbruck, Austria, but no, the U.S. didn't win any medals in the biathlon in that one either. However, to the consternation of Army PR Flax, Snowjob volunteered and was accepted into the G.I. Joe team. Qualified expert all NATO long-range sniper rifles, XMLR 3A laser rifle, which is the accessory he comes with. This bottom paragraph says, submitted by Rock and Roll, and it has a quote. You think we call him Snowjob because he does his job on skis? Negative. He's a con artist, pure and simple, except when he picks up a rifle. Sure as heck, something's gonna fall down. This card suggests Snowjob is a sniper, but he doesn't come with a sniper rifle, he comes with a laser rifle, and that laser rifle doesn't even have a scope. Snowjob could be considered G.I. Joe's first sniper, but he is not equipped as one. Based on what Rock and Roll says, this guy is not trustworthy, but his skills at shooting and winter combat are so good they keep him on the team anyway. Looking at how Snowjob was used in G.I. Joe media, he first appeared in the 1983 miniseries G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero in Part 2. He was part of the assault team that went to retrieve radioactive crystals needed to power the mass device. He had the most exposure in the episode Hull Down the Heavens. He was part of an Arctic expedition to investigate a phenomenon that was melting the polar ice cap. He was primarily used to accompany winter-themed vehicles and stories. Where there was snow, there was usually snow job. He appeared a little in the 1987 G.I. Joe animated movie, but that was the end of the line for snow job. He did not have any appearances in the Deke era of the animated series. In the G.I. Joe comic book series published by Marvel Comics, Snow Job first appeared in issue number 11, which introduced a lot of new characters for 1983. Snow Job and the Polar Battle Bear were on the cover. That was, of course, a snow mission. Snow Job was never a major player. He mostly appeared in winter-themed issues. They had to have periodic Arctic missions to sell the snow vehicles and figures. He occasionally appeared outside of a cold weather setting. For instance, in issue number 36, he was on the killer whale hovercraft on a sea mission. My favorite appearance was in G.I. Joe Special Missions number 20. Snow Job was on the cover. It was a great Arctic mission issue that showcased a lot of G.I. Joe and Cobra's snow-themed characters and vehicles. 
Yes. Looking at Snow Job overall, objectively speaking, the figure is rather plain. It's almost monochromatic, but it's perfect. Snow Job is an Arctic trooper that does exactly what it says on the tin. The red beard is striking and adds even more interest to a figure that already stood out. The white uniform really stood out in 1983. No other figure looked like him. He had a few spots of color here and there, but the snowy white was perfect for his specialty. No blues, no purples, no yellows. Well, sort of no yellows. The fact that this figure is made of white plastic means that yellowing of the plastic will inevitably be a problem. The accessories are all perfect for his specialty. He comes with skis, working skis, how cool is that? And the backpack ensured he could carry all of his accessories. The most important accessory is the laser rifle. It's not just the most important accessory for Snow Job, it's the most important accessory for all of G.I. Joe. Fans of the animated series will recognize it as G.I. Joe's standard weapon. Let's not forget the Polar Battle Bear. Snow Job really belonged with that vehicle. As a kid, if you had Snow Job and the Polar Battle Bear, you had an entire Arctic attack force. Certainly there were later figures that had more elaborate uniforms and accessories, but Snow Job in 1983 represented an innovation in character and accessory design. That was my review of Snow Job. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to the YouTube channel for more vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews and share this video. That's what helps this channel grow. You can find me on social media on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, HCC. 788.com. I can only continue doing these videos with the support of my friends on Patreon, so if you'd like to support the channel, that's a great way to do it. You can get your name in videos. You see the name scrolling on the screen right now? Your name could be there. Next week we are doing something new, not a redo review. This is definitely new territory. We're going to stay in the 80s, but we're going to take to the skies. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching, and until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. My lips are numb. I can't feel my face.